Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Exact Track 4D radar showing us thunderstorms rolling through Metro Detroit, bringing downpours, lightning, high winds, and a lot of hail. And here's some proof of that hail as viewers have been sending us my picks like these from near Howell and Pinckney. So let's get Kim Adams, who's on top of the situation for us, tracking the movement of these storms. Kim. The storms are moving to the east at about 20 to 25 miles per hour. The main concern, high winds and the hail. Winds have been in excess of 60 miles per hour and hail as much as an inch to an inch and a quarter. To give you a frame of reference, an inch size hail is the size of a quarter, like a, a coin. Uh, inch and a quarter, you're getting into golf ball egg size hail, so very large hail. Uh, the flashing boxes you see here, those are severe thunderstorm warnings. We have two in effect right now. One is for Wayne County, one is for Monroe County. Both expire at 630 in 30 minutes. I want to point out, though, in Wayne County, the warning does not include the gross points. It cuts off just uh, to the south of that, just south of Hamtramck, but it does include the city of Detroit. It also includes out near the airport, and that's where we're seeing some of the biggest hail right now. The purple box you see right there, that's some pretty significant hail just outside of the airport, about an inch to an inch and a quarter hail. Uh, these storms are moving to the east at about 20 to 25 miles per hour, so we will continue to see those issues as we track the storms. You can see in Ecorse, Southgate, Riverview, those storms are going to be in your neighborhood uh, within the next 15 to 20 minutes. Taylor at 623, Allen Park right at 630. I'll continue to track the storms for you in your neighborhood coming up in just a couple of minutes. Okay, Kim, in more news tonight, the deaths of three young friends raising some troubling questions in Gross Point Woods. Yeah, it is believed the three overdosed on deadly drugs. As Sean Lay reports, now there are concerns over what evidence police did or did not collect. Well, good evening. We're downtown near DEA offices, and the DEA tells me that they want to know about things like this, suspected overdoses, and they also want to examine the suspected drugs so they can find out what's in them, trace them, and also put out a warning to the public. Tonight, there are questions if Gross Point Woods police responding to this missed key evidence. Caller is still on the phone reporting both addresses, possible overdoses. Tonight, sources tell us that Gross Point Woods police missed suspected drug evidence Saturday night when they responded to a call of three people found dead in two different houses, two sisters and one man. Saucy's Pizza here says all three were in their close-knit family. The caller telling police a lot of information, that the deaths were connected and likely overdoses. Sources believe cocaine laced with deadly fentanyl could be the cause. Police were even warned by the caller about fentanyl in the homes. Take caution, extreme caution with the fentanyl. The caller also told police about possible drug use. So why didn't those officers find and collect the suspected drugs that may have been used that night? The DEA tells us they want to know about overdoses. They want to examine the drugs and trace them. But sources say officers missed white powder present at one of those homes. Gross Point Woods Public Safety Director John Kazanski is not responding to our request to ask him about officers missing evidence. Residents are also asking why public safety hasn't put out a warning that a deadly mix of cocaine and fentanyl could be in the area. Only today did Gross Point Woods Police, Gross Point Farms, and Gross Point Shores putting out this alert that drug overdoses are on the rise nationally as well as locally. Also important to point out, Saucy's Pizza, in just in the last few minutes, put up a Facebook post apologizing for their original post that read they had lost three dear family members. They meant three dear friends. Only one person worked for Saucy's Pizza. All were friends and had connections with Saucy's Pizza, but only one worked there. Important to point out that distinction. Sean Lay, Local 4. Okay, Sean, thank you. Well, late this afternoon, Governor Gretchen Whitmer signed the latest bill to reach her desk, and it deals with hair, specifically the hair of black Michiganders who sometimes face discrimination based on wearing natural hairstyles. Our Mara McDonald is live downtown tonight. Mara, this is called the Crown Act. Kimberly, that's right. It stands for creating a respectful open world for natural hair. Let me show you. For far too long, we know that hair-based discrimination has been used to deny equal opportunity for black Americans. 
No more. Not here in Michigan. With that, Governor Whitmer signed the Crown Act, which makes it illegal to deny educational and employment opportunities based on hair texture or hairstyles like braids, locks, or twists. The bill was introduced by Sarah Anthony, the state senator from Lansing, who cited a research study commissioned by Dove and LinkedIn, which showed that black women's hair is two and a half times more likely to be perceived as unprofessional and that 66 percent of black women change their hair for job interviews, changing their natural curls to straight, and more than half of black women feel they have to wear their hair straight to be professionally successful. From a national perspective, Michigan is going to join a number of states who have already passed Crown Acts, and it is a long time coming. Back here live, Michigan is now the 20th state to enact a Crown Act, and there has been some move at the federal level to try and do something federally. It just hasn't crossed the finish line yet. We're live in Midtown tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Okay, Mara, thank you. The Oakland County woman charged in a hit and run crash that killed a Michigan State student pleads no contest. Top Tim Sue Housen is accused of hitting and killing 22 year old Ben Cable as he walked down an Oakland Township Road on New Year's Day. She fled to Thailand soon after, you may recall, before being taken into custody and being extradited to the U.S. A no contest plea, not a admission of guilt, but it is treated like it during sentencing. So she faces up to five years in prison when she's sentenced and that'll happen next month. Overgrown would be the polite way to describe the state of one backyard on Detroit's east side. Some like the senior citizen living next door call it dangerous and he's been asking for help to address it. The story takes us to the 4600 block of Benatou. Uh, Victor Williams is there live tonight. Victor uh, looks like something is finally being done here. Yeah, well, crews just left after we call up the city and take a look at the result. This is the backyard that's right next door to Mr. Holloway, and we've been talking to him for quite some time. He tells me prior to them taking care of this, it was the worst it's ever been. It said I have to live next door to this. You've heard from 65-year-old Kenny Holloway time and time again about the overgrown backyard at the vacant house next door. You got a, a truck that's been back there. You can't even see it because it's a suburban truck and the grass and, and the weed and everything that grew over. It's worse now than it was before. But this time he said he's had enough. Once again, the vegetation is so out of control, you would think he's living next door to the Amazon. The house itself isn't that much better either. The house is terrible. I mean, uh, the roof falling, caving in, the uh, foundation is, is bad on the inside. Not to mention the front being an eyesore as well with all types of animals coming from the home. We got cats and animals going up under the steps, uh, uh, having kittens and stuff. They coming over in my yard. Thankfully, the city is here to take care of the problem again, cleaning the place and mowing the grass that's so high it was close to pushing Mr. Holloway's entire fence over. And it's sad. I have to call you guys in order to get the ball to rolling. You know, we went through this before. But he's hoping more can be done so he doesn't find himself looking at a jungle every few weeks. He says he's been to every single city council meeting on the matter. We're down there every Tuesday, and it seemed like they hear us, but they don't hear us. Despite nearly $1,000 in fees and fines, the previous owner never did anything. The notice has been up here for the for the uh, longest up there. Now it looks like the home is in foreclosure. Either way, Mr. Holloway thinks things will be better with the house gone altogether. The house really needs tearing down. They just, it's neglecting us over here in our own community as taxpayers. And it's darn shame we have to live like this. And as you guys can see, that vehicle has also been removed. They took the grass all the way down to the dirt in hopes that it won't come back anytime soon. But with this place now being foreclosed, I'm told that Wayne County is going to be the ones responsible also in a way for keeping this up. So that should make maintenance a whole lot easier as well. Victor Williams, Local 4. I'm sure those neighbors are hoping that is the case. Victor, yeah. we appreciate your report tonight. Tonight's Help Me Hank consumer headlines. An infant product recall is expanding, and there's a new text message scam targeting seniors. But tonight, Hank begins with a trampoline warning. Here's consumer investigator Hank Winchester reporting from Canton. Trampolines, sure, they can be a lot of fun, but before you let the kids hop on that trampoline, understand they can be a big danger. It is one of the stories I'm tracking tonight in my consumer headlines. Take a look. 
A trampoline warning from the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Take a look at the numbers. Last year alone, more than 100,000 people treated for injuries due to trampolines at the ER. Children under the age of 10 most likely to be injured, suffering everything from sprains to permanent neurological damage. It's important that you supervise children and use a trampoline that has protective gear in place. There's a big baby tent recall you need to know about. CCATTO baby tents being recalled because of a suffocation and fall hazard. They're gray with neon green trim. You can return the tent for a full refund. And finally tonight, a senior tech scam. It appears to be from the IRS. The scammers asking these seniors to verify their social security number. The IRS will never communicate with you via text. Instead, they'll send a registered letter. You should contact the IRS if you've been targeted. Trampolines not the only danger during the summer. Pools can also be a big problem. It's one of the stories I covered this morning in my Help Me Hank report. We have a summer resource guide to help keep you and your family safe. All that information on the Help Me Hank page at clickondetroit.com. I'm Hank Winchester. Help Me Hank, Local 4.